Hello, everyone, and welcome to Six Pack of Facts, the weekly way of expanding your brain six refreshing facts at a time. My name is Alex, and this week, ooh, your stomach is going to growl. We're diving into the delicious history of cake and the brilliantly luminous history and scientific marvel of candles. Although we typically think of cake and bread as two very distinct items these days, the two were pretty much interchangeable in ancient times. Cake was just bread that was sweeter. Ancient Egyptians made some of the first cakes by using hot stones as the ovens and honey as sweeteners. The ancient Greeks got into the cake game by creating plakus, a flat cake made from eggs, milk, nuts, and honey and even developed a very early cheesecake using goat's milk. And it was the Romans who made everyone's future holidays awful or wonderful, depending on what side you're on, by making a primitive version of fruitcake using nuts and fruit. Advancements in oven technology in the mid-17th century helped to refine the baking process, while icing came into vogue around the same time. The icing typically a boiled variation made from sugar and egg whites, was poured onto the cake before popping it all back in the oven to bake. Once removed, the icing would quickly cool to create a hard, glossy coating. These earlier cakes were still made with yeast as the made leavening agent, but that would all change in the mid-19th century. All of a sudden, bam! Refined white flour and baking powder appeared. The Wedding Cake, capital W, capital C, has become a traditional part of many couples' nuptials. And while many just, you know, eat their cake, there have been other bits of wedding cake folklore throughout the years that are a little different. In the 1600s, spiced nuptial buns were enveloped in hard sugar and decorated with figurines before being broken over the bride's head. Wedding guests would then eat parts of the buns for good luck. In the late 1600s, the buns transformed into minced pies, or sweetbreads, called bride's cakes. As a bit of added fun, a glass ring would be baked into one of the pies. Whoever found the glass ring, and who also ostensibly didn't slice up their throat in the process, was next to be married. Speaking of rings, another interesting tradition to emerge in the 17th century was the practice of passing small pieces of wedding cake through the bride's wedding ring and doling out the bits to women at the ceremony. The lucky recipients would put the cake pieces under their pillow to inspire dreams of their future husband. Depending on your age, you've probably blown out dozens of birthday candles. It's a fun, celebratory tradition that actually has some pretty mystical roots. Ancient Greeks baked round cakes to honor the moon goddess Artemis. To simulate the beautiful light of the moon, the Greeks adorned the cakes with candles to provide a lunar glow. When the candles were blown out, the smoke was thought to carry wishes up to the gods. During the Middle Ages, Germans put their own twist on the candle tradition. One candle was placed on a child's cake for each year of their life, with an extra candle in the center to represent the light of life. But the candles weren't blown out right away. Children were supposedly more susceptible to evil spirits on their birthdays, so the candles were left to burn pretty much all day. If a candle got close to burning out, a family member would replace it right away. When it was finally time to extinguish the candles, so the family could enjoy the wax-covered cake, kids were encouraged to blow them all out at once, in hopes the smoke would find its way to heaven. Of course, birthday candles were far from the first use of candles. From fats to wax to whale buildup, candles have quite the history. Let's light it up. Although ancient Egyptians created rush lights by dipping the dried pith of the rush plant into fat, the earliest true wicked candles are typically attributed to Romans, around 2,500 years ago. Some of the earliest dipped candles were made from tallow or beeswax. The earliest surviving candles are sourced back to the Han Dynasty era of China, around 2,300 years ago, and were made from whale fat. In the Middle Ages, candle makers, or chandlers, would travel from home to home collecting kitchen fats to craft their wares. 
Beeswax was also used, and it burned without the smoke and foul smell of fat, but it was too expensive for most people at the time. Before paraffin wax hit the scene and completely changed candle making, the spermaceti of Wales was used in the 18th and 19th century. Spermaceti, a waxy substance found in the head cavities of whales and is possibly used to hone echolocation or control buoyancy, burned longer, brighter, and cleaner than tallow, making it a big advancement for the candle business at the time. Even though candles are usually pretty small, there's still a lot of science going on to make that tiny flame flicker. When you light a candle's wick, heat from the flame melts the surrounding wax, which is then drawn up the wick. The flame begins to vaporize the wax, breaking down the hydrocarbons into carbon and hydrogen molecules. These molecules are drawn up the flame and react with oxygen to create heat, light, water vapor, and carbon dioxide. About a quarter of the energy created is given off as heat, and enough of that heat radiates back to the candle to melt more wax, which travels up the wick, which breaks down the hydrocarbons. You get the picture. When a candle is burning properly, it's incredibly efficient. If a candle's flame gets a bit too much air or fuel, however, it flares. This interrupts the process enough to allow unburned carbon particles, aka soot, to escape resulting in a wisp of smoke. To measure the output of light, scientists created a unit of measurement that seems amazingly imprecise. The candle power. One candle power is equal to the light emitted by one candle. Okay, okay, so it does get more precise than that. And yes, the term candle power has largely been replaced by candela, but they're basically the same unit. So I'm sticking with candle power here. So let's break down exactly what candle power, or candela, means. To measure light, scientists treat the light source as a single point, with the light being radiated equally in all directions in a way that all sections of this invisible light sphere would experience the same flow of energy. With that in mind, the exact measurement of one candle power is equal to the intensity of a source of light emitting a single frequency of radiation of 540 times 10 to the 12 hertz and with a radiant intensity of 1 683rd of a watt per steradian, or a curved area of that invisible sphere I mentioned before. Yep. 540 times 10 to the 12 hertz and with a radiant intensity of 1 683rd of a watt per steradian. I think I like the light emitted by one candle more. There you have it. The delicious history of cake and the beautiful history and science of candles. Thanks for listening. If you've enjoyed the show, please leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. And to make the show even more fun, why not tell a friend? The more the factier, as you know. Until next week, my name is Alex. And as always, stay thirsty. Can't get enough of these refreshing facts? There are three easy ways you can help support the show. If you're listening through Apple Podcasts, leave a quick review. Then, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss an episode. Then, share the show with a friend. The more the factier. Stay thirsty.